When Gavin Prater-Penny and Ron Westmoss take a stroll, the countryside can be this beautiful, but they've only got eyes for one thing, the clouds in the sky. Seven years ago, Gavin founded a club for like-minded people, the Cloud Appreciation Society. Its members' favorite pastime? Cloud spotting. You need special equipment, two eyes, and you need a special sort of character trait, which is to pay attention to your surroundings. Actually, no, it's nothing special required. All you need to do is realize that to find beauty and surprising stuff, you don't need to get, travel across the world. Like Ron Westmas, who lives in the English countryside of Somerset, many cloud spotters are usually armed with a camera. Always carry a camera with you and look up. Um, because if you have a camera with you and you're looking up, you will see some interesting things up there. And all you have to do is turn and click and you've got a lovely picture of a cloud and it could be very interesting. With a little imagination, the photos exchanged by the cloud lovers on the internet show remarkable things. Now, Gavin Preterpenny has compiled a whole book from images spotted in the clouds. Finding shapes in the clouds is an aimless, pointless activity. And for that reason, it's very, very valuable. Because these days, we feel sort of the, uh, the modern kind of society seems to make us feel the need to be busy the whole time. For Berlin-based climate researcher Henning Wust, Watching the clouds is far more than an aimless activity. He uses them to track climate development and explains how they form shapes. Clouds are largely made up of water droplets. That's what makes them visible. And we can distinguish them from the atmosphere. For example, how low cumulus clouds are very fluffy. And if you can look at it from the side, at a distance or at an elevation, you see very three-dimensional structures in which you soon recognize a dog's face or a rabbit. Even though clouds are usually seen as harbingers of bad weather, their popularity abounds. More than 30,000 people have joined the Cloud Society. Many have uploaded almost surreal films and photos onto the Internet. When I saw, you know, there was a series of photographs and you could see how the cloud formation changed and, and developed, then that made me confident that it wasn't, hadn't been messed around with in Photoshop. There's no 100% guarantee that all the photos are authentic. And some are 100% fake. The homemade pictures that cloud lovers also put on the internet. Any uh, landscape artist knows that the clouds are how they bring a, a, a sense of drama, a sense of emotion into their painting. That's why clouds have been a popular motif in art for centuries, with angels in the skies of Baroque paintings. In the 17th century, they featured in the works of the Dutch landscape painters. And then 300 years later, in Emil Nolde's work. Clouds also appear in the contemporary works of German artist Gerhard Richter, or Dutch installation artist Bernard Smilda, who creates his own fleeting clouds. For Gavin and Ron, another day of cloud spotting draws to a close. There's so much variety and so much going on that you, you, you couldn't lose from, from a day like this. Any day is a nice day for cloud spotting, except when it's a totally blue sky. We hate those. <laughs> Good weather is relative after all. For these two, cloudy days are nothing less than seventh heaven.